The burden of proof. Greetings. I fully intended to make this post sooner, but it has taken me longer than I expected to compose it. I explained in my first post that I used to be agnostic, but something changed my mind about that. In this post, I will explain precisely what it was that changed my mind. Before I expect anyone to simply believe my story, I will provide the evidence that I have. It is primarily in the form of EVPs which were recorded between December 19, 2020 and December 29, 2020, mostly at my house, which is so far out in the country that there is no cell signal, no chance of picking up neighbors talking, and where I live alone well, with pets. Is it empirical evidence? No, not to anyone else besides myself, because I am the only human being who knows for a fact that I was entirely alone while recording these EVPs, and that there was no chance of interference of any kind in the recording process. However, since I do know that for a fact, this experience changed my life. Honestly, I would have done a better job of setting up this experiment, but I really didn't expect to capture anything. I am also including some eerie photos which I will explain, and which are, admittedly, somewhat questionable in their scientific integrity, but creepy nonetheless. Now, you might ask why I was experimenting with EVPs in the first place. Well, my current answer would be, because I was a dumbass. That said, in December, my answer would have been something along the lines of, because I want to know if there's anything out there. Besides, I'm bored. As I mentioned in my introductory post, I considered myself agnostic for most of my life because I could never buy into all the parts of any mainstream religion, yet, I always believed in an afterlife of some kind. A few paranormal-type experiences and just a hunch, really, were the foundations of this belief system. Therefore, when I found myself with some free time last December, being off work for the Christmas holiday, I perused the Google Play Store looking for a game to play. I found an app called Spirit Speak. I thought to myself, hmm, why not talk to some ghosts? I'd never tried EVP before. As I've said, I didn't even expect it to work. This particular app is a spirit box type of thing. As I understand it, it's supposed to have a recording of one voice sounding out the alphabet, and it cycles through those sounds very rapidly. I think the idea is to give the spirits some help by giving them some audio to manipulate. From what I gather, since spirits can't actually speak, EVP works because they manipulate the sound waves as they go into the recorder. You have to run the app on one device, in this case, my Samsung S8, and record on another device I used plain old audio recorder app for iOS and my iPad. I read all this information and figured I'd give it a shot, see if I get anything. I got some stuff. Oh boy, did I ever. The developer of this app, whom I spoke with directly through email, says that there are no words or phrases programmed into the app, and there's only one voice. Therefore, if a user gets any words or phrases, and especially if they're in multiple voices, it's supposed to be legit. He also said that he'd never heard responses like I got, and he only heard the first few. If you are growing skeptical already, just let me say that this is not what I meant when I said that I can hear demons. This is merely how it started. Additionally, I didn't make all the recordings using a special ghost app either. This is a long story, I fear, but necessarily so. Warning. As kooky as this would have sounded to me five months ago, I have to tell you that evil spirits aka demons know that you are reading this, and they will know if you watch the EVP compilation video. I know how some of you are thinking that sounds. I know. It's the truth, though. Proceed with caution. I recorded on five different days, in one to three minute intervals, and the total time that I ever recorded was less than 10 minutes. I have created a compilation of five minutes and 42 seconds chalked full of extremely clear EVPs. Not to brag, because it is nothing to brag about, but I'd say that's a pretty, good, success rate. I have heard ghost hunters lament that EVP work is basically listening to hours of static to hear one or two words. That developer agreed that, someone must really want to talk to me, and someone surely did, but it was not grandma. As I mentioned, 
I have created a compilation, which you can find in a separate video on this channel. It's the highlights of what I captured, the bits that have some, to me, anyway, very clear speaking. I have cut these clips from the original recordings and pieced them together. They are not necessarily in the order in which they were recorded, but close. I have also composed a transcription of what I hear, for those who are interested. Some of the recorded statements were understandable at the recording speed, while others had to be slowed down by 50% or more. When listening to the ones in the latter category at regular speed, I could tell that something was there, but couldn't quite make it out until I replayed them at a slower speed. So, since the optimal playback speeds for each statement vary, even within the same session, and to save you from having to listen to numerous 10 second or so clips, this approach seemed the easiest way to share my data. There is background noise from space heaters and a monitor heater, and that noise is distorted on the ones which had the speed adjusted. Also, my dogs barked a few times during the sessions. The first few recordings sounded friendly enough. There was a lot of, hey, I love you, and, ask me anything. I was freaked the fuck out just that I had captured anything. I was. But, my dumb ass thought that I was sharing my home with some friendly ghosts. Spoiler alert. There is no such thing as ghosts. Startlingly soon, however, the, ghosts, started getting romantic. I recorded, marry me, on several occasions. I gotta say, some of those breathy, marry me's are pretty damned sexy. The first time I heard that, I thought, hold up, let me see who's saying that, because, you know, maybe. The only time that I asked a question, I asked the entities too. Tell me who you are and what you want from me. It was in that session that I met, Andy, and also in that session, in that same voice, is a statement which I heard as, you have to love me and marry me. It was not long. However, before the messages became much darker, the voices repeatedly said, let me out, and, let me out of you. There are also mentions of, nightmare, and at one point, I swear I heard, nightmare cat. That wouldn't mean much to most people, but I did have a cat named Nightmare. He died seven years ago. So, being the logical person that I am, I thought that it was quite possible that the app I was using was a hoax. I don't mean any offense to the developer in saying that, and I can add that it is most definitely not a hoax, but still, I considered that possibility. I decided to try recording without a special ghost hunting app. Again, I really did not expect to get anything, having by the time convinced myself that the whole thing was a sham. So, sitting on my bed one night, alone and by a window, I might add I recorded for one minute with just that plain old audio recorder app on my iPad. On that recording, within about 10 seconds, a man's voice whispers. We're peeping in. A few seconds after that, a deep and distorted voice says. You don't love me. I ended up sitting on my kitchen floor, arms around my knees, rocking back and forth, saying to myself. I am never never going in the bedroom again. Never, never. That was a long night. After all that, I was telling my friends, family, co-workers, and anyone else who would listen. Some of them were saying, there, right back there, is where you lost your damn mind. Others were saying to burn sage, while others still were saying that I needed Jesus. Meanwhile, things were getting weird around here. I'm trying to limit this account to my somewhat scientific evidence and my explanations of said evidence, and this story is long enough already, but I will say that some things happened. One of the things that happened was that, one night as I was falling asleep, I was awakened by one of the EVPs I had previously recorded and transferred to my phone playing at 100% volume on my phone. My phone was on the bedside table, and I'm certain I'd closed all the tabs and locked the screen before placing it there. I should have stopped any and all ghost hunting activities after that, but my dumbass didn't learn. I told myself that I was doing this in the name of science, but really, this stuff is a bit addictive. It's also quite shocking for an agnostic. I felt that I'd looked behind the curtain, so to speak, and nothing would ever be quite the same again. 
I admit that I tried to think of a legit reason to record again, and I decided that I really did need to know if it was my house that was haunted, or if it was me. Therefore, one day, on my break at work, I tried it again. Yes, I even recorded EVPs at my workplace. I figured that my workplace was about as negative as hell anyway, and nothing I could do could make it any worse. I was on break, in my truck with the windows rolled up. There were other people around, but I could barely hear their conversations, and none of their conversations made it onto a recording. Something else did, however. This time I used the Ultimate Ghost Detector app, which was, admittedly, not the best thing for science. However, since I don't take my iPad to work, all I had was my cell phone. One factor that is good for science though is that I didn't even have cell service that day, having neglected to buy my prepaid phone plan for the month. I didn't have a regular audio recorder on my phone at that point, and couldn't even download one with no cell service. Stupid me. I did have the Ultimate Ghost Detector app, or UGT, Ultimate Ghost Hunting Toolkit, however, having downloaded it at the same time as Spirit Speak, but never having gotten around to trying it out. UGT is supposed to be simply a handy toolkit, with no special effects, and a plain audio recorder with no frills, bells, or whistles. It is, you know, for legit ghost hunting. Therefore, I opened up the UGT audio recorder and said, out loud, I want to see if anyone will talk to me now, not at my house, in the broad daylight, with no special app. I recorded for one minute, and I got a response of, Yep, I'm here. It was about 23 seconds into the recording, and it was at an extremely low volume. I had to turn the volume up to 100%, press the phone close to my ear, and listen hard, but it was there, and understandable at regular speed. I wanted to ask more questions, but alas, break was over. On my second break, I asked, Can you say your name? I proceeded again to record for one minute. It said a name, a name that I will not say, because it just seems wrong, blasphemous, and almost like I might be endangering that person somehow if I did. It was the name of a person I did know, a person who is dead. You will not hear either of those recordings, however, because I deleted them. I know, that was not the best thing for science, but by the time I had dropped the illusion that I was doing scientific research. This had become personal. I deleted the one with the name because I was horrified and never wanted to hear it again. I actually deleted the, yep, I'm here, recording by accident. The reason I was so horrified was because the voice was way off and definitely not the voice of the person I knew. It even mispronounced the name. I had to go back to work. I did not let on that I was suspicious. After work, I had a great sense of foreboding as I approached my truck in the dark parking lot. As I got into my truck with a crew cab, I had the eerie sensation that someone was in the backseat. I continued to feel that way for the duration of my journey. It was that feeling of being watched, multiplied by a thousand. I drove out to the countryside near my home and parked on the side of the road. There was a full moon that night of December 29th, I might add, and it was foggy and cold. I had more questions, but I wasn't going to do EVPs at my house anymore. Parked there on the side of the road, with the engine off, I opened the audio recorder and said, Okay, just so I can be sure. If you're who you say you are, tell me the name of the high school you went to. I recorded one minute. It was the only time I ever got nothing. Literal crickets. I deleted that one also, because even at 100% volume, with the phone jammed in my ear, there was not even the slightest peep on it. So, in response, I said, Hum, I didn't hear anything that time. Let's try that one again. Tell me the name of the high school you went to. I recorded one minute. That time I got a reply. At about 26 seconds, the voice said, simply, smart. Actually, it was more like it snorted it. It sounded like a pig. At that point I thought to myself, damn right, demon, I am smart. I decided to take the advice that two different friends had given me. They had told me that, believe or not, if I said, 
I rebuke you in the name of Jesus Christ, that it would go away. I had chills, and not just because it was cold. I really felt like something was in the back seat, something that had lied to me, something that had tried to trick me by impersonating a loved one. So, I turned around, facing the back seat, and said, All right, look, you, whatever the fuck you are, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus Christ. Get the fuck out of my truck, and the hell away from me. Which, was probably a bit more colorful than Jesus would have preferred, but it did work. I felt better. I felt safe. I drove home. Things chilled out around here for a while after that night, but the story was only beginning. As evidence, I also present a compilation of stills from a session with an app called Spirit Mirror. This app, by the same developer as Spirit Speak, and downloaded by me at the same time, rapidly flashes light. It looks like an ornate mirror with this strobe light effect going on inside the frame. It, like Spirit Speak, requires two devices, one with which to run the app, and another with which to record a video of the session. After the session, the user combs through the video frame by frame looking for images which, if any appear at all, will appear too quickly for the human eye to catch at the recording speed. The idea here is that, spirits, can manipulate the light. So, these are my screen captures from the one and only session I ever did with that on December 26, 2020. The reason I stated that, as evidence goes, these are somewhat questionable in their scientific integrity is that, obviously, the developer could have embedded images into the app. He could have. I'm not saying he did, and I did not speak with him personally about this app. Also, there could be some reflection, some trick of light, or something of that nature. But, well, just look at them. Visit my blog, and just look. With a lot of chatter in between and in the background, and overlapping chatter, this is what I hear on the EVP compilation video. If you choose to listen to it, there is a transcription with timestamps in the comments on that video. Ask. Ask me. Love you. You'll never make me. I'm Annie. A big F at the end. Ask me anything. Ask me anything. At the end. Be in heaven. I love you and you have to help me. That one is very low volume and breathy. You're powerless. You'll never make me. That one is whispered. Hey. I think you think you made a big mistake because it ended. There, simultaneously, is, let me out of you. Ask me anything but keep talking. Let me out. Let me out of you. Beg. I love you. Be mine. Is your husband in love with you? Let me out of you. And, at the same time, marry me. Let me out. Marry me. I'm F and Andy. Marry me. That one is breathy. Help, 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 help. Then there's an evil laugh, and he says, are you gonna fucking make me? Hey. You have to love me and marry me. Then he says either, nightmare, or, not marry me. Then there's a long, drawn out, hey baby. Then there's another evil laugh, and he says, little nightmare. Then he says either, little nightmare, again, or, you're having a nightmare. I love you. And if you don't let me out, let me out of you. Beg. Marry me. Then there's a bunch of stuff simultaneously. I hear, ask of me anything, hey hey, as it can be, and, let me out. I'm not dead. Hey I love you. Then, whispered, and at very low volume as the, were peeping in. Then, in a very deep and distorted voice as the, you don't love me. And finally, at a very low volume, is the, smart.